what we're going to be going over here, what they call permanent differences for revenue and expense items when we're dealing with tax accounting here. Now, what we have is really two different cases when we're dealing with these permanent differences here. Case one is where the permanent difference here would never be recorded here on a tax return, but it would be recorded here for financial accounting purposes here on the income statement. And case two is where it would the permanent difference here, uh, either a revenue or expense item here, would never be recorded in our financial accounting or our income statement here, but it would be recorded for our taxes or our, on our tax return return here. When you're dealing with these permanent differences here, you do not do deferred tax accounting on any permanent difference, either being in the financial accounting or the tax accounting, because they never reverse. They affect only the current period here. And what we mean by for deferred tax accounting here is we're going to be looking at a deferred tax liabilities or deferred tax assets. Okay, so let's go down and look at our example here. And I have it laid out here. We're going to, I'm going to break it down between our financial accounting or our book accounting here and our tax accounting here. And we're going to just be looking at two years here, year X1 here and year X2. And we're going to have some income before taxes here uh, showing these amount here for year X1, 350,000, year X2, 325,000. But what we really want to concentrate on is uh, these permanent differences here. So for financial accounting or book accounting purpose, we're in year X1, we're going to have a permanent difference here of 15,000. Everything shown here is in thousands of dollars. So this is the permanent difference here. Now this permanent difference here for financial accounting is never going to be re reported here or recorded for tax accounting purposes here. And that would be for case one here where it's never on the tax return down here. It's only recorded for financial accounting or book accounting purposes. And it could be like a tax ex expense here. So that's what we're dealing with, this 15,000 here. I've just totaled everything up here and I've come up with some taxable income here by those amounts. But really what we have to deal with with these permanent differences here, and we're gonna have to be looking at deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities here, but it's this tax expense. How do we really come up with the tax expense here? based on the permanent differences that we have and also our deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. So let's go down here and look at for tax accounting purposes here. Again, we're gonna have the same income before tax here in both cases, same as for our financial accounting purposes here, but we're gonna have another permanent difference here of $5,000. Now this $5,000 here, it's never gonna be up recorded in our financial accounting or book accounting purposes. It just sits here for tax accounting purposes here. And that could be, and again, it's never in our financial accounting up here, this $5,000. That's case two here. It would be like a non-deductible expense here. So that's our permanent difference here for tax accounting purposes, $5,000 here. Now we also have a deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset in this case here. And for a deferred tax liability, we're taking some extra depreciation expense here for tax accounting purposes over a books, book accounting. So we have extra depreciation here of 60,000 here in year X1 for tax accounting purposes. So that would be a deferred tax liability. We get to take it in the first year here, but we can't deducted in any future years here. Uh, what we do here, it, just so you understand what's going on when we talk about reversing here, this depreciation expense here, extra depreciation expense here for tax accounting purposes of 60000 is going to reverse out here in uh, year X2 here for financial accounting. It's going to be recorded in this case here, $20,000 per year here for the next three years. Okay, so we have a deferred tax liability. That is... Uh, in later years here, we're not going to be able to deduct it here. So what we have is uh, total deferred tax liability would be the depreciation expense of 60000 here times our tax rate. Future tax rate is the same as our current one here, 40%. That's $24,000. Then we also have another uh, deferred tax asset here. And I'm just working through these numbers because we're going to be using these deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities here to determine our tax expense based on these permanent differences here. So for our deferred tax asset, we got some rent received here in year one here for tax accounting purposes of 25000 and it's going to reverse out here in year X2 for financial accounting purposes here of 25000 So our deferred tax asset here is uh, uh, 25000 here times that future tax rate or our current tax rate I'm using here of 40% for $10,000. Okay, so what we 
uh, again, deferred tax liability, deferred tax assets, they're either future taxable or deductible amounts times the future tax rate. But what we want to look at here for tax accounting here and look at this permanent difference here. Uh, what we have, let's just look at how we're going to come up with our taxes payable here. We have to, that's the first thing you have to do when you're doing these deferred uh, liabilities and deferred tax assets here and also these permanent differences here. So for tax accounting purposes here, well, we have our $350,000 worth of income here uh, before taxes, so we're going to add in this permanent difference here of $5,000. It'd be like a non-deductible expense here, so we have to add it back to our, in our income here before taxes. So we have to add that back here. Now, you see the $15,000 up here. That's not going to come into play here for our tax accounting purposes at this point. So then we have that extra depreciation expense, $60,000, subtract that out, add back the rent received here, extra rent received, or the rent received in advance of $25,000. So our net amount here for taxable income for tax accounting purpose is $320,000. Okay, so we've dealt with our deferred tax liabilities, deferred tax asset here, and also this permanent difference, which for tax accounting purposes, the permanent difference here that we had uh, was never on our financial accounting here. Uh, we had to add it back here for tax accounting purposes, non-deductible expense, add it back. So adding everything together, what do we come up with? Our taxable income was 320,000 times the uh, tax rate of 40%. So our tax payable for year X1 here is 128,000. And just following through our numbers here for year X2, we're gonna come up with some taxable income here, 325,000 times the 40% tax rate, we come up with a tax payable here. That's a current tax we're going to have of 130,000. So this is, just remember, this permanent difference here was never on the financial accounting, so we had to add it back here as a non-deductible expense here. So let's go down and let's look at how we'd handle this to determine our, in this case, we're going to really want to look at what our tax expense is here. So first we'll start with, we're going to be looking at our tax payable here, and then we're going to have a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. So let's look at our uh, tax payable here. You always start with your tax payables, and, and that's for our tax accounting purposes. Remember, for year X1, we determined that to be 128000 and so what our tax payable here, we'd go down and credit that here for year X1 at 128,000. Year X2, we have it at 130,000. So credit our tax payable, the current amount here for 130,000 on our balance sheet. That's a liability on our balance sheet. So we know what our tax payable is. And then moving over to our deferred tax asset here, we, we knew what that was here. We calculated that here to be debit that here for $10,000. That was that rent received in advance here. And that was the 25,000 25, here rent received in advance times that 40% tax rate. So debit that here for deferred tax asset of $10,000. So for that's for year X1. And then in year X2, it's gonna reverse out. We're gonna credit it here for $10,000. So that's gonna reverse out. I won't go through all the mechanics of that here, but that's how it reverses out. And then if we move down to our deferred tax liability, we credit that here. Remember, that's a liability here on our balance sheet. Credit that here for 24,000. That was that $60,000 worth of extra depreciation here times a 40% tax rate. And then it's gonna reverse out over the next three years here. We're gonna have that 20,000 here taken for tax accounting purposes per year here times the 40% tax rate. So we're gonna debit or reduce our deferred tax liability by $8,000 for the next three years here. So we went through all the mechanics here. The key is we had to determine what our tax payable was and we also had to determine what our tax assets and our tax liabilities are. But what I want to, and then from there, we're gonna come up with our tax expense here. But what we have to note here for our taxes payable, remember this uh, year X1, that. 128,000 that we included for our tax payable here, that included that $5,000 tax permanent difference here. That Just remember that was included here. The uh, 15,000 here for financial accounting purpose, that permanent difference would not be included. Okay. Again, 
our deferred tax asset, we calculated that. That was that 20 rent received in advance. And then our deferred tax liability, that was that extra tax depreciation. So now, based on what we know here, now we can determine what our tax expense would be to our income statement. And you're going to find out that's simply a plug. And that's the only way you can come up with it. So what Again, remember the, the permanent difference here for tax purposes was included here. So let's just look at what we plug here for year X1. So let's just say our credit amount here for tax payable was 128,000. I'm showing that here. Now it's really, and then we we had a credit here for a deferred tax liability of 24,000. And then we had a debit here for a deferred tax asset of 10,000. So if we move over here and just look at our credits and debits, tax payable 128,000 credit, deferred tax liability, $24,000 credit on that, and deferred tax asset there was a $10,000 debit. So what we want to do is look at our debits and credits, subtract all those out, our tax expense is going to be $842,000. That's simply a plug or a balancing amount. So we can go back and debit our tax expense here for $142,000. And that's simply the balancing amount between our credit here for tax payable $128,000, our credit here for deterred tax liability of twenty-four thousand, and also our, and then subtract out our, our debit here of ten thousand for deferred tax assets. So the balancing amount here for tax expense would be one hundred forty-two thousand, which I'm showing here. And then for the next year, the same thing. Just compare your credits here for your tax payable. That was at one hundred thirty thousand, and then that we had a credit there of one hundred thirty thousand. Then we're going to have a Another credit here, this is where it reverses out the deferred tax asset, credit that for 10000 But now deferred tax liability is reversing here by $8,000. So a debit here by $8,000. So if you, then you're going to need a debit here for tax expense here of $132,000. So run your deal. The key is here, we had to go through all these um, the defer, determine what a deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability, and our tax payable here to determine what our tax expense would be for the year here. But the key is when we talked about these permanent differences here, they don't reverse out. They only, if for tax accounting purposes, you just include whatever that permanent difference is. You either have to subtract it or add it back to the income before taxes, depending on uh, what it is here, how it affects that, how it is affected. And what you have to do here, uh, you have to include that in your tax payable here, and but you have to include your, determine what your deferred tax assets, your deferred tax liability is beyond that to determine what your tax expense is. So that's, well, that'll end our discussion here. Just remember here, when you're uh, doing these permanent differences, they don't get um, included in any deferred tax accounting. You just, you, they're either not, they're not a deferred tax asset, they're not a deferred tax liability. All they do is affect the taxable income for the period here. They don't reverse out, they don't, uh, in this case, they didn't, that permanent difference here that we included of $5,000 never got to the fi into financial accounting purposes. It was just re included here for our tax accounting. So the key is, remember, permanent differences here, do not do any DAC deferred tax accounting on them uh, because they never reverse. They affect only the current period, but make sure you get your, uh, they are included in your tax payable here, whatever, either as a deduction or a reduction or deduction or an increase to your tax payable, depending on the item. And they are either a revenue or an expense item. Okay, so that'll end our discussion.